This is Silica Gel Silica Podcast. Gel. I'm Herb. This is Luis. We're on location here at WowCon Beyond, formerly uh, Women of Wonder. The Dallas Public Library, you know. Foam letters means official. And so, yeah, uh, WowCon is a women, femme, and gender non-conformist focused convention. And um, we're smack dab in the middle of Women's History Month, and it's a very appropriate convention. I would say so. Um, so we're here to interview the guests, the vendors, the patrons, and to get a lay of the land up to learn more about this convention, which is, like I said, this is a very unique, I would say theme, or yeah. how, would you, how would you phrase this? Uh, I guess. Concept. Con- concept, That's, that's yeah. the word, look, we're professionals. So yeah, come along for the ride, uh, and uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go respect some women. <laughs> I had to poop once on that statue. Yeah, it makes a weird noise. Why is it whizzing? We're here, this is we're Silica Gel, Herb. Um, we're here live at WildCon, and we have our esteemed guest here. Um, I'm gonna pronounce it right. Um, Ash Wees. Yep, that's right. Cosplay. Yeah. Today is the on the sixth floor at <laughs> WildCon and Beyond. It's all good. We'll be playing the magnificent Kotoboki, the movie, and that is all. Yay! So look at Joe, we're here live at the Dallas Public Library here, here at WowCon Beyond. And we have our esteemed guest here, Ash Wee's Cosplay. Yep. And Hi. I'm going to ask the uh, red carpet question. Who are you wearing? Uh, I guess I'm wearing me uh, since I made this. Oh, so well. I am wearing Kana. She is a character from the indie game Kana Bridge of Spirits. It's a really good game, you should play it. Um, and yeah, I made this. <laughs> and so, uh, how long have you been at cosplay? Uh, I have been cosplaying and then also going to conventions since 2005. So, do the, do the math. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, don't do the math, it's rude. Don't do the math, <laughs> don't, it's rude. Don't look at it too closely. Anyway. anyway. I'm starting um, to get white hairs on my yeah, I mean, I have I have a wig on, so you can't see <laughs> my white hairs, but I've got those too. It's so. wisdom, it's wisdom. Yeah. So, uh, have you all like have you before cosplay have you always been into arts and oh yeah absolutely creating yeah i've always so thankfully my mom's here hi mom um my parents have been always very supportive of all of my creative hobbies and interests they got me into music so i before all this i did like piano and violin um i drew for a little bit and then i was like i'm not very good at that so i stopped um i would write and like I always liked watching anime when I was younger, like in, like Toonami, that was my jam. I think and that's people's entry point in yeah, the States. Yeah. If it's like Toonami was like the way to watch anime. You'd like rush home after school. Yeah. And yes. so that's where I got into like the nerd stuff and into I, it for me, cosplay back then, that wasn't really a word yet. That's what I remember too. It wasn't. Yeah. That wasn't like now. It's like commonplace. Yeah. But yeah. like, what would they, what did you call it? Like there was. Yeah. We. Do, I just. I didn't call it anything. It was just me wanting to like. I like Android 18's clothes. I want that. Hey mom, can you buy me a jean skirt and a jean vest? <laughs> yeah. And like a white thermal shirt, like so I could, and then I'll part my hair like her. So like that's it was, how it started. Yeah, it's like. Because cosplay to people who are not in the world it probably looks like it's like Halloween every day. Basically, yeah. And it's like that meme that goes around, it's like cosplayers trying to decide what to be for Halloween. It's we impossible. Have, like, <laughs> dozens of costumes. Yeah. I can't decide. So, do you ever, do you remember your, like, was that your first cosplay? Do you remember your What's first cosplay? What's funny is that might actually not technically be my first cosplay. Because um, I think, I like, thinking about it more. What's really funny is I actually, for one Halloween, I think the year before I dressed as Android 18, and again, no wig or anything, I would just part my hair and yeah, call it a day. Very big cut yeah. anyway. It's like so, the year before that, for Halloween, I dressed in a lime green shirt, black pants, suspenders, and then got the person that does face paint to do the thing on my eyes so I could be Usher from the My Way music video. <laughs> Yeah. That is I really unique. Never, like the fact, like what you think, because I'm glad you kind of brought that up. Because people think cosplay, right? They would probably think, okay, anime, video games, mm-hmm. but like not actual people. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, singers, celebrities. Like you'll do, you see, you see John Wick. Yeah. It's but it's not Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. It's John Wick. Right. It just happens to look like Keanu Reeves. Yes. So. 
I, okay, because I'm going to tell my age now, because Usher, he was a big deal when I was a kid. How, how? Like, would you like Usher? Did you like the video? Oh, yeah, I just loved the music video. I, remember, I know the song. Yeah. Yeah, because he had that, but the only thing that I couldn't get at the time was his really cool jacket. It had, like, all these really cool colors in it. And I also just, like, I really loved Usher, and I loved his dancing and all that, so I would always try to do that. We gotta do it. U-S-H-E-R-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. We gotta do that, see? <laughs> that was my first, like, technically my first cosplay. Because, like, the other thing that I've, I've talked to some friends about is and I was telling my mom this yesterday is that to me there's a difference between just costumes and cosplay because cosplay it's the merging of the words costume and role play right. if you don't have the role play part then it's not quite the same whereas a costume it's just something you'd get at Spirit Halloween a nurse a firefighter or whatever yeah. whereas cosplay it's a specific character so nurse joy from pokemon or a firefighter from fire force like right. it's a specific character it's, yeah it's a specific person or i guess in this case it's usher <laughs> which is a specific person yeah. um, and so yeah and that oh um, thanks for that breakdown because i think people like i said people who are who look at this who might be on facebook or instagram in it on an explore page they'll see a costume but they don't really think about that aspect, or it's that aspect of a very specific, you're that character who is this thing, and some people, you know, you've been to conventions, people go all out. They, yeah. they do skits. Yes. They embody the voice, they embody the mannerisms. Into my cosplay. Hello. <laughs> we're live. Yep. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're curious about like the, the overall like, theming of a wild con, where it's mm. focused on women, mm -hmm. And family and non uh, gender non conformity mm -hmm. guests that uh, what to you what is the uh, what do you think the uh, importance of a space like this for creators like that like how do you feel about WildCon like what's your thoughts on like a convention with that focus oh I love it I love being able to have it's it's a space to celebrate and to honor um, you know women and you know non-binary people and people that may not be celebrated as much, may not have that many opportunities, and it's a great way to highlight them in a nice space. And everyone's super talented too, and there's like so much variation between all the different booths. Like you've got leather working and like stuff for your pets, which are like really cute, and like stickers and pins, and all the art looks just phenomenal, and it's so cool, and it, it's such an honor to be a part of it, um, especially because like, I volunteer. I found out about this con in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, and I volunteered at it, and I got to sit at a cosplayer's booth because they needed to go host their panel, so as a volunteer, I was watching their stuff for them, and I was like, ooh, this is kind of nice. What if I had my own booth? So and now I do! You got the feel. You got yeah, the taste of it. I got a taste of it, and I was like, now I want more, and then the pandemic was like, no, <laughs> you have to wait. Because <laughs> now we, because, you know, we... Me and my uh, co-host here, Louis, we, we frequent conventions and we feel like 2023 is, feels like the year that things are, I hate using the word back to normal, but like things are going to be like a full swing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like, I could see that. Uh, you know, like, you know, you know, okay, Akon's here, A-Fest is here, mm -hmm. you got Frontier here, yep. and that, like, you know, a lot of the smaller conventions, like, good thing for like the smaller conventions, they finally, I think they feel like they could finally happen, like, yeah. Yeah, Especially being the DFW, a lot of smaller conventions, and it's I think it's good for those because it's it's you know you're you it's you always try to get a name out there. Yeah, I think it all starts with like yeah. Okay, this year we can finally do it. And so like, do you? As far as being a guest at conventions, have you been a? a how, how, is this your first time guesting? How, how so this is my first time ever having my own table. Right. And it was actually my first time paneling in person. Um, but I have been a guest at other cons before as a cosplay contest judge, and those have been really fun experiences. But this is my first time having a table, and it was my first time paneling. Um, but it wasn't my first time paneling ever, because again, the pandemic hit in 2020, and I was like, I miss conventions. Yeah. I'm gonna make my own. So I made a virtual one. Oh, nice. Um, it's no longer ripped, um, <laughs> because I couldn't, ha it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of moving parts, and I was like, I'm that type that micromanages, so I feel like I have to control everything. Definitely. So it was a lot of stress. Um, so I made my own virtual convention. We hosted it three times, um, August 2020, August 2021, and then again in December, or something like that. It was August and December three times. 
Um, Mixed with things? It was on, it was on, uh, I, actually, yeah, I called it Comfy Cozy Con, which is like, Comfy Cozy is a phrase every time like I see my dog doing something cute, and I'm like, oh, are you all Comfy Cozy? And I'm like, that's it, that's the name. Thanks, dog. Yeah, thanks, dog. Um, so we had that in December, and we had it on Twitch, and then me being the person that made it, I'm like, well then, I want to do a panel. Approved. So yeah, You get to do this. Like, yeah. So, actually, how do you feel yeah, about exactly. a panel? Yeah, exactly. feel great about this. <laughs> <laughs> what should it be about? Think it should be about cop. Where did you get this footage of me? I do because it, it, um, you know there is because this is our first time interviewing a, po a, a cosplayer. And you know you see a lot of I follow a lot of cosplayers on Twitter, mm. on Instagram. Yeah. And usually there, it felt like maybe five years ago there was that whole discussion about made versus bought cosplay. Ah, yes. Like that age-old question. Yes. And like, how do you how, like how like a conversation like that like. How did you? How do you, as a cosplayer mm. that creates, mm. how do you feel about that? Like that, like hi, I guess hierarchy of cosplayer. Yeah. Like to be personal, I don't think there should be like. I think if you are passionate about the the anime, whatever, mm. or that. I said mean, another question. I'll, I'll put a book like that. But how did you feel about that? Like those discussions of like bought versus made. I think that it's one of those things where. Cosplay is a lot of things for a lot of people, and there's not one right way to do it. The only wrong way to do it is to stifle someone else doing it. So, if you find joy in buying costumes, wearing them, and then not wearing them again, or like if you enjoy making something from scratch and then taking it to a con, that's up to you. So, like, who who am I to say what this person should do for cosplay? If they don't value like if that's not their priority if they don't want to sit at a sewing machine for hours at a like at a time to make something then that should that's their right they have a right to cosplay the way they want to and the beauty of the time that we live in unlike in 2005 when i was first cosplaying they have all these resources at their disposal and i think it's great because that means a bunch of people can join the hobby and they can dip their toes in or they can decide they don't like it so there are so many different avenues for that you can buy them online like you can just buy it and then they ship it to you and then you wear it and then you're done unlike me where it's just like okay let me go to joanne's i get all the fabric and then i have to do a pattern and then i have to make it and then i did it fit? it doesn't fit i have to do it again so like but that's what I enjoy out of it. I like problem solving. I like working with my hands. I like being able to say, this was a pile of fabric before and now it's a dress. Yeah, like, it's, it's yeah. Ma like magic. Yeah, some people don't want to do that. And that's totally fine. You don't have to make a costume if you don't want to. The only time, I will say, the only time where making a costume is valuable or prioritized is if you're competing. Because that's the whole point. If it's a craftsmanship contest, then yes, you should be making your own costume and you should be honest about it. It's why I have a build book to show and prove to the judges, yes, I made this, I did not buy it, I did not have someone else make it. That is the one and only time where someone saying you didn't make that is valid. But outside of that, who cares? Right. It's not your business. If they want to cosplay this way, let them. The only time it's harmful is if you're trying to stifle someone else's creativity, or if you're doing things that aren't really good, like um, coloring your skin tone, something that is, yeah, that is not a, right. If that it's is also uh, yeah. for the contention with a lot of things. Yeah. Like, if it's an unnatural color that you don't see in the human race, go for it. Like, you could be Beast Boy. That's fine. Yeah, like any like Teen Titans. They're orange but don't, and purple. Yeah, but don't make your skin darker or lighter for that matter. Don't do that either. You can embody a character without changing your skin tone. Unless, yes. like as we said, if it's an unnatural color, yeah. like no one's orange yeah. uh, that I know or of. Blue. Blue. Purple. Maybe Eiffel 65. They, they don't know what <laughs> no, stop. Um, you know. Listen up, there's a story. No, a so, no, 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 you can't start or else it's. And all stop. day, and all night. No, you're gonna get copyright stricken. Oh, yeah, we are. I got a good singer, they can't do that. <laughs> Just put it through like a filter. If, <laughs> if you can't get your costume across with your hair, your clothing, your props, and you have to rely on changing your skin tone, you're doing it wrong. That's the only way I'm gonna say that you're doing a cosplay wrong. Because if you. You should be able to tell that you are this character because of the things you're wearing, maybe the way that you're posing, 
the way that your hair is styled. If you have to resort to changing your skin tone, I think you need to take a second look at why you're cosplaying this character. Uh, yeah, so PSA, you heard it from a pro? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're like, I'm thinking it, she's saying it, so I don't, you can't blame me.